Hello and welcome once again to a time of reflection on behalf of Kidderminster Ismia Team Ministry. Thank you for joining me and I hope that you will have a blessed time. Well, Epiphany has now gone and the Christmas decorations are away. But as we reflect perhaps on that time, we can also reflect that things don't always change. The Bible says the heart of man is exceedingly wicked. And within Christ, without Christ in our lives, that can be the case. I've been looking with shock and horror, as perhaps you have, over the last few days at things happening in America. And yet, you know, when you look in the Bible, you can see that things do not change. It starts really with Herod. The kings go to see him and he is immediately upset and worried. He knows that somewhere there is a small child who is destined to be king. He sees it in human terms and he doesn't want it. And so when the, the wise men don't go back to him, he is in an absolute state of anger. He can't get his own way. And so he sets out to actually do something that will be so horrible that we still remember it now. He instructs that babies under the age of two are massacred, the massacre of the innocents, just because he is fearful for his own position. All the way through the Bible you see this happening. Kings of Persia and Babylon remember the story of Daniel and also Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. But I want to move forward a bit further. That little boy that was born in Bethlehem grew up. And I want to fast forward, although it's not the time of the Christian calendar, but there are great similarities if we think about it. I was absolutely shocked last week, I'm sure you were, at the scenes in America. And yet, if we think about it, and we think about Maundy Thursday and Good Friday, we can see what happens if things are whipped up. You know, the same crowd that praised Jesus on Palm Sunday, um, we don't know whether it's a Sunday or not, but that time were probably the same people that were whipped up into actually baying for his crucifixion. I looked last week at people in the Senate, faces contorted with hatred and anger. And I thought to myself, I'm sure that probably was what it was like at the time that Jesus was taken to see Pilate. It wasn't a president that whipped up the people. It was religious leaders. Fortunately, I can't see our archbishop or our bishops doing that. But they whipped up the people against Jesus with fake news. They told lies. They made out that he was trying to get hold of a human throne and overthrow the Romans. He wasn't. And the same people, as I say, that would have praised him were probably there baying. Instead of sort of saying words to the effect at the time, stop our steel, stop our steel, they were saying crucify him. Crucify him, crucify him. And it is so easy to get caught up in those sort of things and in the hysteria at the time. And man's hatred and the inability sometimes to believe the truth. But the one thing is, there is a bright side. Because God also can intervene. Yes, on the day of the crucifixion it meant Jesus going to the cross. The Jewish leaders were still worried. But you know the followers of Jesus that had been scattered abroad and I'm not surprised if you think about it that they ran away. If you had a baying mob like that wouldn't you? 
And if you'd been Peter, worried about the fact that things could have, you could have ended up being crucified as well, wouldn't you? And yet when Jesus rose from the dead and when he sent the Holy Spirit, things changed. All of a sudden, the people that were running away stood up for what was right. And it is up to us as Christians sometime to set the moral high ground. Not because we are better than anybody else, but because we are serving a Lord and Saviour, who certainly is. I'm a great fan of Paddington Bear. I love Paddington Bear and I could watch his movies until the cows come home. But there's one thing that Aunt Lucy said to Paddington which is very relevant to us. If we are polite and kind, the world will be right. And that is the way that perhaps we should be thinking of leading our lives. We also need to think about the way that we test news. Is it right? Is it from a reliable source? We've seen so much again with anti-vaxxers and people denying, Covid idiots they call them, that will not literally believe what is blatantly and patently the truth. And with us as Christians, anything that we get, we need to measure against God's word. Now when it comes to the way we live our lives, we can do no better than to look at Romans and also there's a passage in Hebrews that is very similar and I would just like to read it to you now and it is from Romans 12 and it starts at verse 9 love must be honest and true hate what is evil hold on to what is good love each other deeply Honour others more than yourselves. Never let the fire in your heart go out. Keep it alive. Serve the Lord. When you hope, be joyful. When you suffer, be patient. When you pray, be faithful. Share with God's people who are in need. Welcome others into your homes. Bless those who hurt you. Bless them and do not call down curses upon them. Be joyful with those who are joyful. Be sad with those who are sad. Agree with each other. Don't be proud. Be willing to be a friend of people who aren't considered important. Don't think that you are better than others. Don't pay back evil with evil. Be careful to do what everyone thinks is right. If possible, live in peace with everyone. Do as much as you can. My friends, don't try to get even. Leave room for God to show his anger. It is written, I am the one who judges people. I will pay them back. Do just the opposite, the scripture says. If your enemies are hungry, give them food to eat. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. By doing these things you will pile up burning coals on their heads. Don't let evil overcome you. Overcome evil by doing good. In this new year, what a mantra to live our lives by. And we couldn't get any more better advice than that. We are here to show God's love. It's one of the prayers, isn't it, that says that God has no hands or body but ours. We are the only way that people can see his love. I think the other thing that has shocked me with what was going on with America, and I really, really felt this, was when I saw President Trump outside a church holding a Bible. I'm sorry. I don't usually get political, but that does not represent the God that I serve. 
The God that I serve is a loving, caring God. Oh yes, I believe that one day he will judge us. But I do not believe he is a God that is full of indignation and hate. We need to pray for those, as the scripture says. We need to pray for the, for the leaders in our times for wisdom. And we need to look at ourselves. It's no good looking for the speck of sawdust in somebody else's eyes, the scripture says, if we've got a great big huge log in our own. I know that I've got enough going on in my life. But I don't think whatever happens that we have we can let things go by where people are getting hurt, where people are getting physically hurt as well as mentally. I think sometimes we just have to take a stand. What would Jesus do? It's a good motto to go by. And I think if we take that as our motto, we can't go far wrong. Well, I hope we will all be like little Paddington. That lovely little bear that brought so much joy into people's lives. I know he's fictitious, but I can't help but think of him as real. If we are kind and polite, the world will come right. Whatever our views, we need to respect others. And moreover, we need to show God's love in however we treat people, wherever they come from, whatever the colour of their skin. We are all God's children. And may we remember that. Amen. Shall we just pray? Our gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you that you sent your Son to the cross. We thank you that through him we have seen the way of love and the way that people should be treated and help us to aspire to that. Help us to pray for our leaders, to give them wisdom and that we will always do our best to show your love wherever we can. Help us to take this scripture in Romans and use it as our mantra as we go forward into this new year so that the day when we come before you, you will say to us, well done, you good and faithful servant. Amen. And so now let's say the grace together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and remain with us all, now and forever. Amen. Thank you again for watching. And may this year certainly be a much better one than last year. Amen. <laughs>